again, everyone can, uh, if they, if you want to see my screen and you don't already have access, you can go to startmeeting.com slash join slash sitestaff, S-I-T-E-S-T-A-F-F, our company name, no spaces, and uh, enter your name and email address. I am recording this so everybody can see, but, you know, to be honest, uh, this is really all about you and nothing about us. But I wanted to have the opportunity because we didn't do this initially. Uh, we have the opportunity to uh, just field some questions from Meridian and just see how we can uh, continue to make improvements. So um, I'll again introduce myself. I'm Jonathan. I'm the National Director at Site Staff. Joining me is Aubrey Roden, your account manager, who handles all the Meridian communities, as well as Michelle Korb, who is our client services director. She's the one that deals with any questions you have regarding support. Uh, anything that you have regarding updates, and we'll talk about those as well. The reason for this call today is uh, thanks to the opportunity to meet Ken and Maria in person, as well as Sue in uh, St. Louis when we were all at Sherpa training, uh, we wanted to have the opportunity to uh, to do what we didn't do initially, and that's to have an internal call before kickoff, uh, but also a review session as well and just answer some questions and then uh, perhaps ask some questions ourselves of ways where we can continue to do um, better for your communities. So what I wanted to give you a bit of a synopsis of what we can, uh, what we intend to cover today is who we are and, and how we serve you. For those of you who aren't intimately involved already, uh, we'll cover um, aspects of the Meridian knowledge base and how we got to where we are today. Uh, the tools that are at your disposal as far as some recommended ones uh, in addition uh, that will allow us to serve you better. And then we'll cover some best practices and then open it up for uh, questions uh, from the group, which is really, you know, the only reason I'm here today. By the way, the only reason why I'm hosting the call today is that Aubrey is on the road um, coming back from a, um, uh, a, a trip to uh, uh, to deal with a, a death in the family. I'm, I'm Sorry if that was too much information, Aubrey, but uh, I want to make sure that people knew why you were uh, you were not available to run uh, the slide deck yourself. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. And I apologize if it's a little loud. I will put myself on mute here so you don't hear the, the driving. Your mute uh, or your voice, uh, whatever it is that protects that and blocks out the fog is working well, Aubrey. I don't hear any back. Oh, good. Anyway. Thank Excellent. you. Okay, so um, for those of you guys, uh, well, first of all, just a little bit about us. We've been in the industry, or we've been in business for about seven years now, and have been uh, in senior living industry, uh, the senior living industry and senior housing for over five years. And the reason why we are serving this industry specifically is because uh, conversion rate in the industry off of senior living websites is only about one to three percent. And when I say conversion, what I mean is that's how many people are taking action of any kind. So examples of conversion are filling out a contact form, buying through a shopping cart, making a hotel reservation online. Those are all things that require you to leave your personal information behind. And for a number of reasons in senior living, that just doesn't happen very often. So we are in the, in the, uh, we are in the business of improving conversion rates or taking more people uh, that get to the website and converting them uh, at least to a qualified lead or a tool. <clears throat> the reality of what we do and why we are the industry leader in this space uh, is that there, the fact of the matter is that uh, whether it's subconscious or people are aware, people crave empathy more than service, at least in the initial engagement, which means that whether or not I'm aware of it, I actually care more about the fact that you understand that I'm in pain uh, more than your ability to fix it. So obviously we're talking about, you know, in various stages of care and in inquiring, uh, these are people that we understand that oftentimes they're in crisis and, uh, and that they, you know, are first meant to be understood uh, before, you know, they can feel comfortable proceeding. Um, our chat hosts are college educated Americans and uh, they're hired specifically for empathy. Uh, the very lean skill set in which they possess, and Michelle's team is uh, second to none in this industry as far as their ability to uh, be proficient with the skill set, which means that they need to type 70 words in perfect punctuation, grammar, and spelling, and articulate what is on the Meridian knowledge base and put that into their own personality uh, in, a, in a very quick matter of time. And, uh, and do that while injecting empathy into the conversation. Uh, but they are skillfully trained, uh, thanks to the Meridian team, 
uh, on how to be helpful on these very personal questions uh, that um, your inquirers have. And then, uh, you know, about us, and again, we are the industry leader. We uh, we serve somewhere in the neighborhood of around 1,000 communities now. Uh, but as you guys know, and, you know, as you're in different areas of California, your own community has a different heartbeat. But uh, Meridian has a particular um, mission and uh, culture and a strategy in which we are um, implementing to serve you. And, and so, therefore, we construct a knowledge base specifically for the brand and then allow you to inject your own personality into them. Uh, for those of you who are seeing my screen now, here is the uh, Lompoc community that uh, uh, shows the live ch chat feature on it and a couple of different calls to action. Um, the sliding bar that I happen to hover over, uh, it, you need to hover over it in order for it to uh, take action because you can close out uh, the chat box feature on the bottom right. So these don't happen simultaneously. I just did that for effect. So the tools that we have at our disposal and that you do in order for us to serve you are, first of all, that knowledge base that, uh, thanks to Ken and Sue, were uh, instrumental in us being able to build um, that is very culture-specific. As <clears throat> Kelly Andrus, who owns Sage Senior Living in Pennsylvania, said, and I think I've coined her phrase uh, or repeated it um, ever since she told me, she said, Care is kind of a given these days in, uh, in, in a private pay environment at least, and it's really the service and the culture behind the care that people buy. And so we really embody that statement, and so it's our responsibility and objective to understand your culture. Uh, that way we can be able to showcase what it is about a Meridian community that stands out, uh, that allows them to make a very educated decision or at least be comfortable taking the next step of the sales process. The other uh, tool that we have at our disposal collectively is our dashboard, where each of you has a, uh, a login to where you can see your results in real time. Every single chat is, uh, is located there. Uh, even if you delete it immediately and you want to be able to look at it, you can also update your knowledge base, which we're going to talk about in a moment as well. Or you can be able to compare and contrast what a day versus a night, weekday versus weekend, all the information is in there. And uh, I'll show that to you in a moment. The recommended additions that we would like to see in order to really serve you better uh, are first of all, there's a number of your communities where we still don't have um, a range or a starting at price. Uh, because you guys know that uh, price is oftentimes the number one question, our ability to at least show, have a value statement about your community and then offer them something that allows the conversation to continue is extremely valuable uh, because if we're not able to be of service when we are uh, asked a question, then it just doesn't help them uh, you know, through their process and doesn't allow us to continue the conversation to where we can start peeling back the onion and learning about the prospective resident and what's important to them. Um, so we uh, still have that information outstanding. You can provide us with that information or uh, go to Maria or Sue or Ken and provide that uh, to them and they can get it to us. But that's a big, big help in order for us to uh, serve you better and expand those conversations. Uh, because we were in the room at Sherpa, I will mention too that for those of you who have a CRM that we can integrate with, it's so helpful because not only does it allow us to be able to timestamp everything, it allows us to be able to uh, make the sales process transparent and follow that buyer journey, but it also makes the process for you very efficient because that way you don't have to enter anything into your CRM. Uh, if we have that integration and we integrate with nearly everyone uh, in, this, uh, in the senior living realm, uh, that would be very helpful as well. And then really driving traffic is super valuable. Um, as you'll see when we look at some results, the biggest challenge that we have, and we are doing our best to, uh, to build upon it, is that we just don't have a lot of visitor traffic, and I'm going to cover the reason why uh, right now, but there's usually a direct correlation of the amount of visitors that the site has versus the amount of chats that we have hence the amount of leads, tours, et cetera. And so naturally, the more fresh visitors to your site, the better. That can be in the form of landing pages. 
It can be in, in terms of migrating them from social media channels like Facebook. So uh, thankfully, we are only one of only a couple uh, live chat companies that do integrate with Facebook in two ways. We While we are waiting for Facebook Messenger licensing agreement uh, to be signed and agreed to by Facebook, we added a widget that um, basically just is a HTML picture on your Facebook page that says, you know, says something like chat now and can migrate people to <clears throat> your website where we can launch a chat and show where they came from. So that's one thing that can bring visitors from a social media channel there. But since we are working on um, actually performing Facebook Messenger on your pages for you, the only thing being is that um, there are a couple of hoops that we have to jump through and we can open that up for discussion. But the whole point, folks, is that we want to be able to drive as many, tra uh, as many visitors to your website and engage in as many conversations as we can for your benefit. And then even though we haven't had anybody opt in for this just yet, and there could be reasons for that, um, being able to keep a lead warm is a very big goal of us. There was a study that was uh, 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 published in Senior Housing News in February of 2016. It was a case study done by Empire Solutions and Glenn Devins. Out of the communities that they tested, they were they showed that you were 400% more likely to go from inquiry to tour if you were able to respond to that inquiry within five minutes as opposed to 10. Now, we know that that is true and that there needs to be a sense of urgency, but we also understand that your jobs are very difficult. It's very difficult to get to a lead that quickly and keep that lead warm. So that way we want to be able to notify you when the lead comes in. So if you're doing a home visit, if you're doing a property tour, even if you're at lunch or sitting at home with your family eating dinner, we'd like to notify you when that, uh, when that conversation takes place. That way we can make sure that it goes to the top of your priority list to respond. Or we can just be uh, expanding your knowledge base for a strategy of when a realistic time is that we can um, establish for the visitor of when you can respond to them. That way we keep the lead warm. Very quickly, I want to run through this just to show you what the dashboard looks like. Michelle is available to you to uh, send you uh, your login and uh, password that is proprietary. That way you can have access to this information. Uh, my admin page looks a little different than yours, but this is where you can uh, update a knowledge base. You can see who within your distribution list at your community is receiving the leads and make changes as need be. You can also reach out to Aubrey. You can reach out to me or to Michelle to update that information at any time. Uh, on the reporting side, as you can see here, there's a lot of reports there for you. You can be able to run uh, certain select uh, dates. You can run reports. I love the all count report, which is what you're about to see as far as um, how for your independent, independent community or for those of you like Ken who have power user access that can see all of the communities. This allows you to be able to see how you're doing in certain categories like Sorry, I'm going to skip ahead like this one. So uh, these numbers might be difficult to read, and so I want to highlight, and again, I'm happy to give you each a snapshot of your own numbers, um, but starting with um, what I consider the most important uh, information on the far right, actually, by your community, and you can run individual reports. It doesn't have to be the all-count report, um, but let's say for R uh, Riverside, for example, uh, two tours were generated um, off of about 2,500 visitors, but you can see that that's the total visitor count since we started serving you, and Riverside has, uh, uh, in, compared to some, far more visitor traffic uh, than some of the others do, and that's where our biggest challenge is, is trying to be able to get more visitors to your pages. Now, I will state for the record, and we'll find our way around this, that about 70 to 80 percent of our chats will originate on the home page. And because we're only serving a certain select number of California communities right now, we don't have the luxury of being able to represent the full brand. And we knew that going in, so it's nothing that we weren't prepared for. But, you know, I think it is safe to say that there are a lot of conversations that we could be having if we would represent or we would have the luxury of representing all communities uh, because without having information for any visitor, uh, no matter where that community is, we just simply can't be on the home page because then we're not of value. And the last thing we would want to be is a detriment to you 
because we're not uh, making that user experience a very positive one. Uh, I'm going to skip this for now, but this is an example of what a transcript uh, looks like and, you know, based on the information that we have. Um, this is a tour that was able to be set uh, for one of the communities with some obviously some personal information removed. Uh, but this is a good example of what a, a, a general conversation can look like. Lasted about, let's see, this one started at 46 and ended at 07. Yeah, lasted about 20 minutes, uh, which is very common during this time. It means that the communication preference or tool is supported by the visitor. It's at their own speed, and it is a very casual conversation that does show empathy and, uh, and that there has been some kind of a connection given uh, for this woman who is looking for her father. Um, again, just an example. Uh, I want to get rid of uh, my part of this and then be able to open this up for questions. Uh, but what I want to do is to be able to cover, again, some best practices that my apologies, folks, this would have been beneficial had we started with this. Um, because we had some limited opportunity to engage you guys, and Aubrey has such a big heart that she took a lot of this responsibility on herself to gather the information for your communities. Uh, we didn't go through our standard protocol of onboarding, and I think we missed an opportunity to be able to convey these best practices in the beginning. Uh, but just because uh, the community relations directors and executive directors may be the only ones that are receiving the leads doesn't mean that everybody, especially somebody that's at the front desk that we could transfer a call or we'd be a part of a tour, wouldn't benefit from understanding what uh, this service is all about and how they can contribute to its success. Um, in all of your marketing efforts, it doesn't matter if it's in social media, I always recommend a Facebook post to say, you know, during these set of hours or maybe even 24-7, and I can't remember the hours in which we're serving you right now, uh, but we can expand the hours and you can have questions answered. That way we can uh, make sure that the reach, uh, the community outreach is there uh, and that more people simply know uh, that we're here to serve you, and it can be during hours that uh, you, know, you may not be present for. Uh, determining a point person, I think that internally uh, Meridian has covered this area of who would respond to leads, and then there would be a backup plan. Uh, so, again, those leads aren't waiting. And, uh, and then having a response goal. And uh, this involves us, too, as far as when there is uh, a sense of urgency and you're already at the community, terrific, but do we have a plan and does the knowledge base allow for us to be uh, confirming with the visitor of when they can expect to have a response back? That's pretty pivotal to make sure that that, uh, that lead stays very warm. Um, understanding the dashboard, we can you know, send you to a uh, bit of a tutorial video to explain what each section is there, but it is meant to be very user friendly. And uh, you can even use it in your sales meetings to, be, to see where um, maybe a lead or a family uh, that has come into your community via live chat, where they stand in the sales process. And then, uh, of course, using a CRM when we have that ability, like a Sherpa, to be a, uh, looking at response rates and times and what their buyer journey really looks like. So um, I'm going to skip the FAQs here because we already have started. Um, what I want to do is just leave this up here, though, and be able to look at these questions for who are there. Um, and open this up to your team, Ken, and everybody who is here about what questions we can answer for you uh, to make sure that, uh, that we can continue to move the needle upwards and that you can simply be able to see uh, the best gains that we can have. We're only as good as the information that we have here, but I promise you guys, nobody is more committed uh, of anyone who serves you in your communities to, to being of value to you. And uh, better late than never, of course, but uh, we are, we are here to answer you know, whatever questions you have and, uh, and to answer whatever constructive or otherwise criticism you have for us. So Ken, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, hey, great information, you guys. Um, first question I have is, I know that you said it in the very beginning, so who, is it Michelle or is it going to be Aubrey that the teams would reach out to if they have any questions? Uh, Ken, I would go ahead and just reach out directly to me. This is Aubrey, and I will forward them over to Michelle if I can't get the answer, Jonathan, and we'll just make sure everything kind of gets filtered. Jonathan, is, is Michelle, do you guys, how do you feel about that? Yeah, that, that works for me. It's easy to have one point of contact, and you can get it to the right person if need be. 
Okay, so awesome. So we'll uh, so every one of you can just m make sure. Jonathan, can you, there you go. If you guys could write this down um, and uh, or take a photo of it and uh, or a screenshot and just make sure that if you have any questions, reach out to Aubrey. And then Aubrey and Jonathan or Michelle, have you guys already sent out the um, the login information to each of the communities, um, or do you need email uh, the email addresses for everybody from me? Um, I can send it to the email addresses that we have listed for each community. So we have email addresses okay. for, you know, where leads are supposed to go. So if that's the right email address, I can start there. I just sent you your login that will see all of the communities. Um, but would that be the oh. right email address to use for each community? Um, Any questions from anybody? Ken, did you cut out? I did you say yes? Those were the correct emails. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear that. Um, so uh, the emails that we started off with, apologize. The emails that we started off with, yeah, those are all the correct emails. Okay, um, perfect. I'll send. What I'll do is I'm going to send you another email um, in a little or a little bit later after I get my car fixed um, with. The communities. I just want to verify who who we have um, that you guys are servicing for which which communities, and then uh, if we have anybody anybody else uh, to add, um, I'll send you any additional emails. So. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and, this and with your login, Ken, you'll be able to see the communities that we currently chat for, and you can also see which emails we have set to receive. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Hi, I hey, have Ken, a question. No, go ahead, please. <clears throat> I'm sorry. This is Michelle from Meridian Garden. So I've seen some of the chats come through, um, and I guess they're emailed to us in detail. And then um, I've seen during the chat that there's an attempt maybe to connect them over the phone. Do you guys do that? Or how do yes. you do that? Okay. Yeah, so as part of, um, and Aubrey, I'm guessing that as part of their, their package, you um, signed up for an online call transfer. And so how that looks to you guys, while we're chatting with your visitor, if they express an interest in speaking on the phone uh, right away, we attempt to start that connection. And so it calls um, the visitor's phone, they answer the phone, and then it dials the community, and then you answer the phone, and so you're connected with the visitor um, on the phone instantly. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, because I, I'm not sure, because I've seen in the chat that there was an attempt to do it, but I'm not sure if it got connected correctly or not, but um, I was just curious how that worked, so thank you. And that's a great point, Michelle. I'll, I'll say that, um, you know, if, if, without anyone really being aware of how the online call transfer process works, it's, it's hard to, you know, uh, not be a surprise to a, a front desk or even a direct dial uh, that you're not anticipating the, the call. So, um, you know, that it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm even happy to do a kind of an express uh, recording uh, with Aubrey on just how to be able to um, to know when one of those call transfers is happening, uh, just to make sure that everybody that could be involved with uh, with that call is aware and knows how to recognize it. Um, it's a great question. Yeah, and and what? Yeah, and it sounds like maybe just letting them know that that option is available. So it, it sounds like maybe she didn't know that 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 we also do that, and so. Uh, just making sure all the communities are aware that, that they, they do happen and what it looks like it would be great. Um, hey, is Brenda on? Brenda from Whittier Place, are you on? Um, okay, so uh, since she doesn't sound like she's on, um, I, have, I do have a question. So one thing that um, was brought up um, by, by Brenda, there were a couple of – Two, two different leads that she had forwarded to me that um, I guess that the staff that answered the call did a really great job of, um, of answering questions, but when it came time to transfer to the, uh, to the community, um, it, the, 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 the um, how do I say this? The, the transcript 
showed that it made it almost made it sound like the person that was was fielding the questions that the, was the salesperson uh, from from site staff that was answering the questions made it almost sound like the person was going to be speaking directly with um, with the CRD right away. Um, and I just want to make sure that we are having all of your staff setting people up for uh, for good expectations because one of the people that was transferred to the community got very irritated um, and that, uh, they, that they weren't going to be speaking directly with um, with the CRD because of the fact that she was already with another family. So I just want to make sure that we are setting setting our leads up for success, letting them know that uh, that they'll be transferred to the community, and hopefully, I, I don't know how you want to do that do that dialogue with them, but um, basically letting them know that um, that if the salesperson or executive director is available, then they'll be talking to them. Otherwise, they may have to leave a message and have somebody call them back. Um. Hey, Ken, this is Michelle. Thank you for bringing it up. So can you, and this is an easy fix on the, the way that we just word, you know, how, how things are going to be, how the visitor is going to be connected. Mm -hmm. So when the number is dialed, when the community number is dialed, is there a receptionist that answers or a front desk? Yes. Yeah, it was, um, it was, it, it was addressed work? by the concierge. It was addressed by the concierge. And since, since this came, came to light, um, I've actually talked to, uh, most of our concierges to make sure that people are being set up properly, that they know that they're being set. They're be, they're, they, they could have could have a person being live transferred to the community, and that we just need to handle that um, carefully. But I just want to make sure that 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 your team is also saying something to the effect that we're going to transfer you to the community, um, and if the if the appropriate person is available then they will be connected to that per I don't know we'll we'll come up I'll I'll, I'll talk to you guys offline about it and we can come up okay. with a with a, an appropriate um way to handle that so okay yeah it's usually a you know we are attempting to we'll connect you to the community if uh so and so um is unavailable at the moment they will return your call you know as soon as possible yeah uh, or something, something like to that, that effect. yeah okay yeah Okay. Hey, Ken, this is Monique. Hey, Mo. Hey, I have a question about that, only because while listening to CallRail, you know, I had that one family say, well, they just don't know what they're doing. Because, um, you know, when the calls transfer, there's we are not made aware that they already spoke to someone, you know, through you guys. So we're answering it. They're giving us their information all over again, and then we're transferring them to another person. Is there right. a way that when the call's transferred to us, before we actually speak to the person, you know, their team lets us know, hey, we're transferring a call, and this is the person's name, before we actually talk to that person? Yeah, that's a great question. Is there a way, um, Aubrey or Michelle or Jonathan, to basically – have the site staff person um, have that individual the lead on hold or on mute, uh, and at least let the team know that that this is a a lead that they've already vetted some information. Uh, is that possible? Well, so not really because uh, we don't actually our chat hosts don't actually you know pick up the phone um, and call the community. It's all done systematically, and gotcha. so. You, you know, typically we stay on the line with a visitor. You know, we'll keep them if sometimes they just don't respond to us once they've gotten the phone call. Um, but we do try to say, you know, let me know when you spoke to someone. Um, and then we send the lead, you know, as soon as either we see that the visitor's been connected or if they stop responding, we send the email. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other way. Well, there is, Michelle. So first of all, Monique, it, it's, th this is a very popular question, and in a perfect world, yeah. I, I just don't know if we can have technology tied to where we can do that, because in our experience, um, we, can't, we can't terminate the, uh, the live chat until we've confirmed that they are connected, because the last thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have all their information, but we don't want, if technology fails for any reason, if they get cold feet, 
uh, and they decide to hang up if their boss is coming around the corner or if, uh, uh, if the front desk is putting them on hold, we need to make sure that they are connected before we send. Now, what we can do is on the dashboard, if, you're, if, if a CRD is logged in to the dashboard on a daily basis, they don't have the routing time of servers contacting each other when the email is sent. And so we tested this, and I've seen it myself, that as soon as the lead is sent, it gets logged into the dashboard. So in the lead report, you can actually look at the lead report, and when it comes in, you can click it open, and that, in, in that way you can confirm the details uh, because the, uh, once the chat is terminated, it's sent. But the servers have to talk to each other, and sometimes there can be a delay, you know, up to a couple of minutes before the CRD gets that email. So it is a great question, but I would say a best practice is to just simply log in to the dashboard and make that a, a habit. That way, in the lead report, you can automatically pull the transcript as soon as the lead is sent. Um, unfortunately, that's about as good as we've gotten so far, um, but you know, well, we'll, we'll certainly keep it open. Go ahead, Michelle. Um, I, I was also going to wonder if we can reverse reverse the calling order. So um, if we have a visitor that wants to speak on the phone, we can call, have our system call a community first. And so when the concierge answers the phone, they'll heal a recording saying, you're going to be, you know, please hold while you're connected to a web visitor so that the concierge knows he's going to be or she is going to be speaking to someone that has an, a chat going on. And so that might would that be enough kind of a heads up so at least they know, okay, so when I transfer them to the CRD or, or whoever they're going to be speaking to, you have a heads up that the person on the phone is a call. I love that, but, um, Michelle. I think that's really good. What do you have? Yeah, that would that, help greatly. Yeah. yeah, that would be helpful. Okay. It is yeah, ideal. The only, right. the only thing we have the to only, insist upon is that, yeah, that, 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 that the concierge can answer the phone or that somebody can right. because – um, that's where we just run into trouble. That if that if that phone goes to voicemail or it doesn't get answered, Ken, uh, then gotcha. then it's of no value to the visitor. So we yeah, no, I gotcha. an internal protocol. Then perfect. Hmm. Okay. If, yeah. If that, if that call doesn't get answered, then the visitor's phone will never ring. That that yeah. call needs to be answered in order for the next step to take place. What happens vice versa if they call they call the visitor and then call the community and they don't answer the phone? Does it go straight to voicemail? Say that one more time. I said what happens now currently if we call the visitor and then call the community and nobody answers the phone, does it go to voicemail? So the communities should I – mean, here, here's – yeah, so most communities don't have – they're not supposed to have voicemail. We have a couple of communities that there is a voicemail system in place that is, is – that we don't we, – we can't – we're trying to fix it so that we, we don't have that voicemail there. So there are some calls that if, um, if they don't get answered in time, then some of those calls at some of the communities do go to a voicemail. Um, but not all the communities have. Um, that's only that's only a few communities that have a voicemail system that we can't seem to figure out where to turn that off. Um, but we're in the process of trying to trying to determine that. So maybe um, once we we shut off those voicemails, then we can actually um, discuss this. I mean, where where Monique is is at one of the communities that happens to have a problem with a voicemail system that is. Um, was set up previously that that we don't seem to have access to, and so I'm working with the phone company to try to get that shut off. Um, but for the time being, uh, like I said, some of the communities do have a voicemail system, and so that's going to be a, that would be a potentially a problem. So right now, I guess that the best thing is just to we just need to train our concierges just to be prepared that there may be some calls. Is there is, when the when the when the per, when the caller gets transferred, is it just is it, from our end? Does it sound just like a person calling the community? Is there's not like a, does, a sound? Yeah. Okay. No. So, yeah. So not, we just we currently. just are going to need to yeah, Mo. We're just going to need to train to, to make sure that the that people that are answering the phones know that there may be some people until we get your voicemail system fixed um, or shut off. Um, we'll just need to make sure that people know that there could be somebody that is being transferred that has already spoken to uh, a live chat person and shared uh, Do you have a caller ID at the community, Ken? 
Yes, Some communities do. do. Yeah, yeah, Mo does. Okay, so we can we can give you the number that it will come from, so your concierge can't. Is, can it, always the, is it always going to be the Is it always going to be the same? It's always going to be the same number. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Can you go ahead and share that? Yeah. Will do. Now, Thank just you. to summarize what just happened here, do we want to switch the call order or just provide you guys with the phone number? Can we um, do both just so that we're prepared in case, because here at uh -huh. Moore, sometimes our calls are being picked up in the wellness center by the nurses and not always the concierge or a care staff walking by if our concierge is off. So I just want to be safe because I understand mm -hmm. the frustration from the caller where they come in and they have to repeat their story three and four times before they're actually getting the information that they're looking for. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys, um, you guys are the are the um, the experts here, and I know that you work with a lot of different communities. What are some of the best practices from other communities in terms of handling this um, this this obvious frustration that can can uh, can can be detrimental to a, a lead? Other things, sorry, I was on mute. Um, the things that we just talked about, I and mean, what Jonathan said, is getting into um, the habit of, of of being able to log into the dashboard and see the conversation, um, letting them know. You can say, you know, one moment while I pull up that chat transcript that you had, um, and take the time to go through it. Um, you know, recognizing the number that's calling from, so you can be a little bit prepared um, to pull up that chat transcript. <laughs> Reversing the call order. Um, so some of the things we just talked about are usually, you know, the best practices we try to right. implement. Right. Okay. Would you guys be able to send out just a quick email to all, all the teams um, just saying, hey, you know, great call today. Here are some of the best practices that we talked about. Um, this is the phone number for your caller ID. Um, mm -hmm. You know, lo log into the dashboard. This is the login. This is the website. This is the your login information. Something to that effect, just so they they have it all on one one sheet that they can print and put by um, everyone's desk or or whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. So the other thing I wanted to ask you guys uh, is anybody on this call who manages your Facebook pages? So the teams themselves can actually upload. Um, the, uh, the EDs typically have the admin rights as well to the Facebook pages, um, but Janet Davis in our home office is the one that usually uploads a lot of the the, um, the information onto everyone's Facebook page. But the admins actually, the EDs can actually do that as well. So, yeah, I was just curious what kind of conversations they were having via the chat on Facebook if people were contacting them on there and just what you guys were finding were some of the questions and concerns uh, visitors may have through Facebook. Okay. Um, Ken, Aubrey, guys, I have to jump off now in a minute or so, but uh, Jonathan and Aubrey can, can answer any other questions you have, and I'll get you that uh, email, and I'll send the logins for everybody's dashboard out to the team um, and awesome. the phone number Thank from the so call much. transfer. Okay. All right. Have a great Thank meeting. You. Talk to you guys soon. Yep. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. So does anybody have any other questions? Mo, did, did, did we kind of address your concerns? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I have another question for you, Ken. Maybe you can answer. Um, like Jonathan had mentioned in the slide presentation, that uh, some of our biggest concern was the amount of traffic some of these communities were having. Um, are you guys doing anything additionally to sort of increase that traffic over the next year, or what's kind of your game plan with that? So to increase the traffic to the websites, right? That's what you're talking about? Right. Yep. Yeah. So we are, um, we, we are doing some – there's a person in, in our home office by the name of Tabitha Butler, Butler who's actually doing some work with trying to increase traffic to our Facebook pages. Um, we're also trying to do – we do have some PPC campaigns at some of the communities that are trying to increase uh, traffic to to the website, and and so those are some of the things that we are doing, trying to to generate more traffic. But um, that's about it. 
Okay. By the way, Ken, um, my personal stamp of approval for Tabitha, I think you have a rising star there. I, I like her a oh lot. Oh, my God, she's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I'll let her know. She's she's a superstar. <laughs> it, just so you know, uh, Aubrey, this is somebody who uh, came out of college to this job, and, and she's she's a stud. So I'm uh, – I'm excited to see. Yeah, what you we spoke really highly of her. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm a big fan. I definitely is going <laughs> to be a real asset to Meridian. Um, yeah, and, and I'll let. Go sorry, ahead. Go ahead, Jonathan. I was just going to say I'll let Tabitha know um, not only what you just said, Jonathan, but also that we need to try to increase some traffic to the websites um, to to help with site staff uh, and see what she has to say, and maybe um, we can loop her in on the next call that we got that we have with you guys. I'd, I'd like that. I, I think that she's uh, she's she's obviously a sharp cookie, and I think that she's already you know apparently has already fixed a lot of the um, social media channels and, uh, and and just trying to increase audiences there as well. So uh, I'm happy to share what we consider you know as best practices from other clients. Um, you know, the, the, I often say Ken that uh, we're not terribly innovative. All the good decisions we've made. Are, are have come from requests of our clients. So you guys are the smart ones, and it's just really about how you educate <laughs> us. And uh, we are students of Meridian and uh, in, in all of their respective communities. Um, but uh, speaking of, you know, being students and continuing to learn, when you do get the access point, and, and I'm stating this for the record since this recording is there, and we'll send this to you as well, Ken, uh, for, the, for the others as my biggest request, is um, when you do log in, please go to the admin page to look at the knowledge base because if we happen to be um, uh, providing, let, I, I'm not saying misinformation, but maybe a lack of information about your communities, uh, we'd love just you know a, a quick review of what is there now and, uh, yeah. and, and we'll take as much as there. Uh, Michelle is a genius when it comes to filtering the information so it's still accessed efficiently and communicated efficiently to the visitors because time is so of the essence. Uh, but it's, uh, we, we'd love a more robust uh, knowledge base from each of the communities. And if you consider you know, it could be useful, please give it to us. Uh, it may not be and it may not make Michelle's cut, uh, but we'd love to have you know, anything fresh uh, anything that would be relevant, uh, more answers are always the better. And again, we're, we continue to be students and learn as we go. And uh, you know, thanks to the most uh, the, the 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 newest update that we have of a Meridian community could uh, you know upgrade the way we serve the entire brand. So whatever information you have for us, uh, whether it's in a knowledge base or just you know food for thought as we continue to serve, uh, we, we we crave the information. So please keep it coming. Okay, and then we'll um, I wanted to add one more thing on that, Ken. Uh, it's really important. I know Jonathan mentioned it uh, through the through the side presentation to get pricing, just the range mm -hmm. on individual communities. I know some of those are missing, and that that is extremely important. So I don't know if there are thoughts of why you felt that it wasn't important to provide that information, but if we could at least get pricing on all the communities, I think that'd be great. Okay, yeah, well, um, I'll talk to my team uh, with Maria and Sue, and we'll get you guys some pricing for the start prices at least. Um, Perfect, yeah, just the range. Yeah, yeah. It keeps so we'll the get conversation you, we'll get you going. Absolutely, Excellent. absolutely. Yeah, the one yep. thing I would then, say is that oftentimes it, it, it helps the chat-to-lead ratio. Anytime we see a lower than about 40 to 50% chat-to-lead ratio, Ken, uh, that usually alerts us that we're not being as much of value to the visitor uh, as we could be to prolong the conversation. So uh, oftentimes okay. that can be uh, pricing. And uh, to my knowledge, uh, Aubrey, it's not a question of uh, of of that we uh, have been granted uh, that starting at price. It just hasn't come uh, for several of the communities so far. Uh, but I don't hold anybody uh, responsible on this call for that. It's just a request from us that will, uh, without question, pay dividends. Yeah, no, we'll make sure that we get you this, the, the range so that you can uh, continue to engage people on the phone or on, on the on the website. And Thanks. then uh, Ken and Jonathan, I don't know we were where we're at as far as adding additional communities or you know trying to get our way up onto the homepage. Where are we at with that, Ken? Honestly, that I don't know. So let me look. Um, okay. Let me log into the my login, and then I will find out um, which other communities we 
of, of ours in our region and district that we don't have on there. And then I'll touch base with uh, with my with uh, Sue and anybody else to see if we can add any more Perfect. people or communities. Rather. Yeah, that sounds great. Great. And, and Ken, okay. last, uh, last request to me is let's go ahead and just look at the calendars for those that aren't there in Maria's region, and we'll go ahead and schedule another call that can be as early as tomorrow. Um, yeah, let me let me reach out to Maria to find out what some dates are that would work for her. I know that trying to schedule it within a 24-hour time frame is sometimes challenging um, to get all – that teams like to have a, at least a few days in advance um, – so that they, they can plan accordingly. And then I like to be able to send out a reminder to people um, to jump on. So let me touch base with her to find out what some dates are available for her and her team. And I'll suggest possibly tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll, uh, I'll include you guys on the email and then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. And Monique, if you're, are you still on the call? Yes, I am. I'm here. Okay, perfect. Yeah, please uh, reach out to me directly uh, once we change up the cycle of these calls and let me know your thoughts and feedback. I'd love to kind of see the difference and just make sure that we're staying uh, connected through this whole process. Okay, perfect. Thank you for your help. Yeah, no problem. Okay, we're nearing the top of the hour. Any other questions that we can answer for you or just, uh, you know, words of wisdom from being at your communities about, you know, how we might be able to serve you better? Uh, hi, this is Michelle, Meridian Gardens again. Um, the one thing I did want to ask is how do you handle pricing? It's usually a strategic uh, decision. Uh, Michelle, and so we'll work with Ken and Maria and Sue to determine exactly what is, you know, the, the, the brand standard, if you will. Uh, but also, I mean, you know, your, your community has its own heartbeat, and if there are best practices of how you like to do it, what I'll tell you is uh, that uh, we know it's an important question, but it's usually not the um, – the only thing. And so naturally, we're not going to just automatically spit out pricing when we have it. Uh, we're going to ask, uh, we typically will ask questions as to, you know, what about price is important to them. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to include a value statement or two about what, you know, is included in the rates uh, for the community and then, uh, and then ask them, uh, you know, just ask, answer a question with a question, although it does help to eventually uh, be able to quote the starting at price and see if that works for them. Uh, that way we're not wasting their time. We are being of benefit and giving them the answer to a question that it just simply prolongs the conversation and uh, so that we are serving a purpose. Okay, great. Thank you. That's, yeah, a lot of times, you know, if they're just initially searching and kind of, you know, average, what to expect, those kinds of things, um, because, you know, ultimately we want to be able to talk with them about it. So. Absolutely. And like I said, if you have any questions of, or any suggestions about what you found to be very successful for your communities, uh, we're all ears and I, I assure you that we will, uh, we will address that question uh, and, uh, and have the verbiage to allow for that uh, that will be there for your approval um, you know, from, uh, you know, from, from Ken and team on down. But uh, it's a great question. We want to make sure we get it right for you. Thank you so much. And Jonathan, last question from me. Um, the recording that we're doing here is that just going to be up on the dashboard for uh, uh, for this the, on the website? No, it, uh, it'll just uh, it it'll be a, a link uh, that I'll just simply send to you. So okay, uh, awesome. all, all of which you'd want to be there. It's not accessible to the general public. Uh, it's just in that uh, that short link that I will uh, send to you a tiny URL, if you will, and uh, and I'll send that to you uh, following the call. Okay, thank you. Thanks, you guys, for doing this call. I really appreciate it. I'm sending an email to Marie and Sue just to recommend that they um, that we redo that we schedule another round for the other teams that were not able to be on the call. I think this was beneficial, um, and um, so we'll see what uh, what works for for them. Well, thank you, Ken. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you, guys, for uh, for tuning in. Uh, it was nice to hear your voices, and uh, it was nice to meet you in uh, St. Louis, Ken. I look forward to continuing the conversation with uh, Marie and Sue. Absolutely. Likewise. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for uh, everybody that's on the call. Thank you. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you, you as well. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Fantastic. Well, welcome, Sidharani.
Did I say it right? <laughs> <laughs> and Heidi. Uh, we're so happy to have you guys. Uh, my name's David, um, formally, and I'm with Jonathan as well. Uh, he's our site staff's national director. Um, and uh, we're just happy um, that you were able to set this time aside and really value, value your time. So um, definitely want to dive right in. And I really just wanted to start um, with you, really. I um, want, didn't want to put you on the spot too much, but, I mean, I guess I just want to get a quick understanding of, you know, where your marketing stance stands on, you know, your website, um, like how happy are you with your performance? Are you looking to change anything in the future? Are you looking for any opportunities in that realm? Um, I just want to kind of to let you talk a little bit about that just for a minute or so, uh, not even, or even a few seconds about that. Sure. Um, well, we are, um, when we, uh, when we got our website up and going, it was a, a pretty quick process. Um, uh, as you guys are probably aware, we're, we're a startup, um, and so, um, you know, there wasn't really a, um, a, you know, anyone in the sales and marketing um, arena, uh, you know, as part of the organization until Christine came on board in August of 2017. So, um, so the the website was um, was uh, created and is managed by uh, G5. Um, uh, they're an agency based in, in Bend, Oregon. Um, so we have been working with G5 to make some um, some changes and updates, um, uh, primarily with just you know uh, the the content um, and structure of, of our website. The structure will pretty much stay the same. It's how we uh, where we want certain content to live and um, and updating our content um, to be better to reflect our programming and our philosophy um, uh, a little bit better um, since we have still been working through um, some of the programming and philosophy. Uh, for example, uh, we just, um, <clears throat> you know, we just, we're, we just named our dining program, for example. So um, that content is being developed now so that we will be able to post that on our website. So it's, to answer your question, David, it, it's a work in progress sure. um, because there, you know, there are some things that, um, you know, when the web website was created, it was, um, you know, very, uh, uh, you know, standard information that we wanted to make sure, you know, it was put on the website. But as we continue to develop our, our, um, our uh, business and, um, you know, who we are as a, a company, um, that will, um, you know, we're, we're working on making those uh, up dates and changes um, as we go. Well, you know, as I was really, like, looking at your website and reading through everything, um, I really liked what I found, um, and it kind of painted a really nice picture of your culture, and, I mean, from what I was researching, I mean, I saw that you, you serve with passion, you know, you value relationships, you, you think that diversity, you know, makes us better, you know, you pay it forward, you're involved in the community, you encourage fun, and, you know, you expect the best, you know, so that's something that's really important that always, that I look for when we look for someone to serve, because, I mean, we want someone that performs at the top of their game, you know, that's what you're showing in your, in, in your culture, and that's what I found just from doing the research on your website, so I think you did a great job so far um, on, in that realm, and, you know, providing, you know, that proper respect and dignity and treatment and how we serve our um, customers, um, you know, that's where our mindsets align, um, and that's where I see some similarities between our two operations. Uh, but because, you know, that bottom line is, you know, that we want to provide excellent service to, our, to everybody and make them feel good. Um, and the reason why I bring this up is because, you know, we want to make sure, you know, that we are supporting um, – you know, all of our colleagues and all of our um, partners, you know, make sure that they're promoting positivity in the world, make sure that we're doing our part and that we're on that same page. So I really, I mean, that kind of got me excited when I was looking at your website and everything. So I think you guys did a great job there. And, you know, Thank you. <laughs> of course, yeah, well, absolutely. It's, it's important to us as we build, you know, the organization and the company um, and, you know, um, the people that, that we hire, like Heidi, who's, who's new to our, our team, um, you know, that, that as we build 
our company and as we bring on people, um, you know, it is we are creating something special and um, mm -hmm. and you know we want to make sure that you know the people that we bring on and and you know in, in building this company, um, you know, are, are all folks that um, that believe in in the culture that we're trying to build and create. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so that's what we always look for first. And so we hit, you guys hit that one on nail on the head. So moving right in to, you know, kind of cutting to the chase here as to why, you know, live chat should be, um, at least we can, why we should discuss it. Um, you can see my screen, right? Can you see my screen on your, you can? Okay. Um, is there anything, look at these four points on here. Is there anything that really kind of stands out to you? Um, these are just some um, industrial facts on, um, you know, conversion rates, on, you know, marketing dollars spent, um, getting visitor attention. Um, anything kind of stick out to you that is alarming or resonates well with you? Um, point number two, that we said uh, companies typically spend $92 to bring their customers to their site, but only a dollar to convert them. Um, that's interesting, but I, um, I think that, and I don't know, David, if I mentioned to you, but I, you know, we, uh, when I was over at Blue Harbor, um, mm -hmm. we did pilot, um, live chat, nice. um, and we did it for a, a handful of communities, um, you know, to test it out, and, um, we didn't see a, a high conversion of, mm -hmm. <clears throat> of of leads converting to to move in, um, and the other piece of it is we did see uh, you know folks that were coming to chat that might have already come to us like you know months ago and they've already been in our database, um, which was a great opportunity to to work through those again um, and and engage with those those engage in those conversations again. But I'm wondering you know one to three percent. Um, are you saying that that's without live, and, and so when you're saying that with live, the actual conversion would be higher? You know, not correct I mean, no? it's, it's not exactly what that we think. You know, we actually know um, that we can increase um, that conversion rate. You know, all of our, um, all of our partners um, that we serve, um, you know, turn a profit, and that's trackable. Um, you know, we... Um, relate that directly to their, um, uh, why am I missing it? It's just the, the CRM that they, um, that we integrate with and, you know, we're able to track it. But really bringing it back to this, I mean, in a nutshell, I mean, we're not your ordinary live chat service. You know, we understand that there's so much more attached to um, making this decision and that's really where we put our main focus and that last point of how people craving empathy more than service in the initial engagement, that's really where our um, bread and butter is. Uh, we understand that people are going to be making a, this tough decision. You know, this is a huge life decision, whether it's for themselves or a loved one. Um, and you know, when you provide that sort of customer attention and understanding what they're going through, that's how that's our whole kind of philosophy on how we start a chat. You know, we're not basically like, hey, what's your name? Uh, give me your number. Like, give me your information. That is not our approach. That's just going to scare people away, really. Like, we are here to welcome people. We are here to answer questions. And then we're here, you know, definitely we want, we want to collect the info, but we're going to do it when, it when the time's right. And all of this is with empathy. And that's our core and that's what really separates us from the rest of the pack. And so I wanted to ask, do you remember what the name was of that live chat service that you used? I'm not sure if it might ring a bell with Jonathan. Um, so he's a little bit more versed. Do you remember the name of the live chat service you used at Blue Harbor? Um, yeah, we used Conversion Logics. Conversion Logics. Let me start that down. Okay. Well, as you'll see, I hope that you'll see some differences. Um, and it's not just, I mean, I know that you can probably in, in, you know, kind of piloting with them, I'm sure you believed in the, the possibility of growing conversion. And, you know, that's really 
you know, every day we're evolving our, our own chats. You know, we're only as good as our last one. And, you know, we just want to connect with your website visitors and really make sure that they have what they need so that we're teeing them up really for you to do what you do best. Because, you know, that's all we're doing. We're just, we're just building leads. And we're educating them. We're getting them the best um, customer service because we know that's what you are going to do once they walk through your door. Um, and so we're just kind of teeing that up. But, um, I mean, I guess, I mean, I can run kind of this through this. This is uh, some of our friends from Senior Living Smart. Um, it's just how live chat can complement, you know, your sales strategies. A lot of people are researching online first. You know, a lot of people are going to make a decision uh, within, you know, um, 12 months. And then, you know, a huge portion of people are going to be um, buying from the first person they speak to, you know, because, I mean, that's just what this industry study showed. Uh, but, you know, it's just all about, you know, when we have those emotionally charged buying decisions at bay, you know, like caring for your loved ones, you know, you just need to represent yourself to the fullest. And that's how live chat um, can really help complement your efforts. Um, that's really on. We're partners in this. You know, we only want to show you in the best light possible because we are serving you um, ultimately. Um, and that's our ultimate goal. Um, so yes, as you were saying before, uh, conversion increases, yes, one of the items that we can do, but as I was saying, you know, you can boost your customer service appearance. Um, you know, just think about when you have someone walk through one of your physical location doors and, you know, they're greeted, I'm sure, like, they're welcoming and they're there to assist with anything. Um, that they might be looking for. And that's what we're trying to do with all those website visitors because there's so many people that just come in, leave, and, you know, we that's just so much opportunity leaving uh, without um, tapping into. So that's where proactive engagement comes in. Uh, we have a few different strategies on different boxes that we use um, to invite it. There's either a tab. I'll show you a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, but... Um, plenty of different options to invite people to chat and say, hey, hello, I'm over here. I can answer any questions that you may have um, and everything like that. Um, but, you know, what's really nice about it, of course, is that it's private. Um, you know, the visitors, like the ball's really in their court. You know, we are not, you know, our strategies don't really, um, we're not trying to, like, pry information out of them. We're going to do it when the time's right. And, um and we're just being there for them. So we're building a rapport, serving with this empathy, and then we will extract that personal contact information when the time is right. Um, so that's kind of our whole possible impact. But in a nutshell, if we had to say, um, feel free to interrupt me anytime if you have any questions too. I get all excited when I start talking about all this stuff. But uh, um, in a nutshell, we are raising your conversion rates just by humanizing that website engagement experience. And, you know, and we really do so just by addressing the needs of your website visitors, by educating them, empathizing with them through meaningful chat. And, you know, that's really, um, we have a ton of really wonderful chat hosts um, all over the country, and um, they do a fantastic job, and it's really genuine. Um, and, of course, I would love for you to experience it for yourself, which I'll give you maybe a couple of websites to go and try out a little later. Um, but, you know, this is an example of one of them, one of our great partners at Belmont Village. Um, they have this little um, box on the left there. There's one um, that kind of can conceal itself and suggest a live chat because, you know, it's up to you whether we want to be more, um, more visible or more to the side. Um, we have one that kind of floats around my personal favorite, and that one actually shows the most results um, as we can track everything um, in that realm and adjust things to as they are um, uh, adjust things on the, on the spot. So take a look here. Um, we had a awesome case study done uh, with Belmont Village. Um, we had over 4,000 chats. Um, anything uh, pop out to you that uh, kind of uh, intrigues you at all? <clears throat> Excuse me. 
So this was a year, um, a year that we worked, well, we're still, we're still partners with them, but um, we just kind of tracked everything. We had over 100 community tours. So, I mean, that's, with, when we approach senior living, we want, like, our goal is to invite them to tour and book a tour so that they can, so you guys can show what you, showcase what you can do. Um, and then, of course, you know. Sorry? I'm sorry, David. Are these new leads that are coming in, or are these um, how how are you guys able to track um, the the data? Or, or does some of this include um, leads that have already been um, they've engaged with in the past and are coming back to the website and engaging in chat, or is this brand new lead activity? So this is, I mean, it can be a combination, but however. We deal, when we track these results, I mean, it is on the spot. We save every single chat. Um, you're actually, um, you know, we have this whole database set up where it's really easy to use, where our partners can see every single chat um, and the actual conversations that are being had. And then what we do, we track everything as to, um, you know, when we transfer the lead over to you, um, it's all trackable. And it's all, you know, on the spot. Um, um, so, I mean, I guess it's, if they come back to your site and they have a chat, we just, oh, we check that one. And then we just focus on building the lead, whether it's a return visit or not. So, um, hey Dave, can I, yeah. can I yes. ask uh, Sidarni uh, a question about your question? Um, I, I think I know where you're going with it, um, but can you go ahead and let us know why that's important to you of whether we're talking about a return visitor that might already be in the pipeline or being worked? Uh, why is that? Why did, why did you ask the question? Oh, I was just, I was just curious, really, um, whether these were uh, new leads to the site that, that are engaged or whether they were returned. Because um, I think you're going to get a combination. I just was curious for mm -hmm. this particular case study. Um, what what uh, what if it was if it included um, uh, return visitors? So we only we only track our visitor monitoring code embedded in our software was built only to track uh, new unique visitors. So uh, these are fresh visitors that are coming that are tracked. But that's a great question. Mm -hmm. I would say that uh, when it comes to um, something that could be a return visitor. <clears throat> and uh, we're constantly just building upon our code, and, and uh, most of the time it's not because we're innovative. It's because our client has asked for it, and so we say, wow, that's a, that's a good idea, and so we build it. But mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we can track, though, or we can track in the future, because just like Google Analytics, you know, we can't do anything historical. So if we were on your site tomorrow but we weren't on there today, we wouldn't be able to track the difference. But from the time that we would, we could. But the question um, I'm wondering is, is that more important to be able to track return visitors because of remarketing campaigns and it would make sense for you to see who's already been to the site to begin with? Or is it more of establishing what is more valuable to you, somebody who is already on the pipeline, who you're already engaged with a family, and maybe the, the lead or the tour that we ended up generating for you on your behalf might be less valuable because it might already be somebody that is in your pipeline. Um, very good question. I think I think it's kind of all of it. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. uh, obviously we want to track. <clears throat> we want to see, um, you know, are we reengage? How at what level are we reengaging people? Um, it also helps us to coach our teams as well. If someone's coming back um, and they're reengaging with us through chat. Um, you know, uh, whether it's a month later or, you know, six months later, um, how are we approaching that um, differently? If different, if we are approaching it different, yeah, excuse me, differently. Um, you know, so it's it's kind of a um, I'm kind of looking at it from a holistic viewpoint, and that's you know that's why I'm I'm curious because we do find that the ones that are coming back. Um, at least with Blue Harbor, we did have you know folks that came back to us um, that had a higher uh, that, that had a higher conversion because mm -hmm. we had touched them at one point, 
um, now they're back on our website. They're engaging through uh, through chat, maybe you know to ask more questions or whatever it is. So those typically did have um, you know a, a higher conversion. Um, part of our our thing, a part of the thing that we um, I think lacked as well was um, a, a very refined um, ability to track. Um, you know, we were kind of, we were doing it kind of on a manual basis. So it mm -hmm. was, you know, here's all the chats. Then we had to go back and compare it to our database, you know, and trying to find that information. So if it was a repeat person, so if it was someone who engaged with us previously, um, we were actually going into the database and pulling up each individual, um, you know, lead or prospect. Um, so it, the the tracking piece of it was a bit cumbersome, and it was hard to really get a good grasp on whether or not it was working because it was all very manual and very cumbersome. If that makes sense. So, it does. Yeah. Uh, so so again, you know, it, it for me it's just kind of getting a feel for for one how this whole tracking mm -hmm. thing works. Um, and, and two, you know, are you finding that the ones that are coming back and re-engaging um, are, 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 have a higher conversion because they're re-engaging with us, um, if that makes sense. Does that answer your question? I'm sorry. Yeah, it does. Well, I can, uh, let, me, let me say three points very quickly, and then I'll turn it back over to Dave. First of all, in addressing conversion logics, um, somebody that we've tested a lot over the years when, and now we can't even find a client who uses them. Uh, Merrill Gardens used them for a while. I tested them on Blue Harbor's website when they were there too. Neither one of them is live anymore, and I think it's because it's just a very different uh, strategy when it comes to chat, and, um, and the results have to be there or they don't. And, uh, and I'm, I'm not passing judgment, but what I can tell you is what Dave is saying is true, is that <clears throat> in order to be the best at what you do or the industry leader, and we serve almost a 1,000 communities now, Sidarni, uh, the, uh, and that's only because uh, our chat hosts are amazing. Um, we, 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 uh, in order to be a site staff, chat host, you have to have a certain level of proficiency on the technical side, which would make David and I really lousy chat hosts. <laughs> but that's one thing. But, you know, to, to have, you know, real genuine empathy, and we actually recruit and hire, you know, test for that and then hire the people who have big hearts that just simply want to serve. And that's something that uh, I, I think I'll always have a, a great respect and affinity for senior living, um, you know, uh, providers, whether they were a uh, you know a, a, a CNA at a young age, and then they decided to be a, a, a community relations director or an ED or an executive. Um, that hard kind of follows, and uh, our ability to connect emotionally uh, with visitors because we show empathy every time uh, is the cornerstone of, of of what our business is, and that's the the biggest disconnect that I've found in chatting with you know a number of chat companies over the years is that that's a real missing element where um, and, and that and making sure that as uh, David mentioned there's a uh, not any information that is demanded up front it's during the natural course of a conversation because uh, once we've served a purpose we you know would deserve the right to ask for something in return but never before so there right. is a strategy that is very functional for us and when Dave mentions Carlene Motto at Belmont Village or you know Reed Davis at Dial or Stacy Darling at Hearth you know there's not a single client that we serve at Arnie that um, you know that that we wouldn't just simply hand you a phone and say just you know ask them for the, some honest feedback of how we serve um, uh -huh. Ironically, the way that um, Christine finally uh, answered my call back in the MBK days was that um, I found a picture of her when I was on a plane flying to Nashville last year for Argentum, and she and uh, she and Carlene are giving each other a hug. So I sent that to her and I said, "Hey, I think we're fans of the same people." And so I, all of a sudden, you know, we uh, we we got into some friendly conversation. But I, I think that the work uh, that we have in our body of work really speaks for itself. Uh, and, I, and I frankly don't think that anyone can really hold a candle uh, to strategically designing chat, not just around empathy, Sidarni, but also the culture of an organization. The way that you guys are, you know, uh, launched a new brand, uh, you did it for a reason and there's a story there. And there's a story around the culture of care that is unique to Clearwater. And I, I don't think that... Uh, uh, 
anyone would deserve the privilege of serving you unless they uh, knew exactly what that culture was and then how we could strategize with an existing sales process, which is pretty probably pretty strong, and, and be able to serve our purpose. And that's point number one. Point number two is shorter, and that's about um, being able to uh, to track. So we believe, as you do, uh, and I'm glad you answered the question the way you did, Sidarni, is uh, about uh, a holistic approach. At the end of the day, um, what most of our clients believe in, and I'm fine being able to, you know, take the ROI test. Every single community, as Dave mentioned, turns a profit. If we if we agree to serve you, we've done our due diligence to make sure that uh, the buying process is emotional. The you know, there's a high ticket item or service that you're providing, and that you have enough visitors coming to the website. But also your intake process. Well, you know, we'd ask a few questions as far as what a traditional lead looks like in going in. But if we believe that the answers are in place and we can put our guarantee on the table, your initial investment is going to be recovered or will continue to serve you for free until it is. Every single client, every single community we serve turns a profit. Uh, we literally guarantee it. And there's not a single company that I know of uh, that is willing to make that claim. But and it didn't start out that way. That's because they're amazing at what they do. And, and we can make that calculated risk. But we also believe that uh, it's about a holistic effort. Um, I think it helps, especially when we're talking about you know, something that's in the pipeline. Uh, let's say that somebody has been uh, courting a family for three months, but in one conversation, our chat host was able to get them to agree to a tour. We believe that that is supremely valuable because um, we were more functional in a 20 minute conversation uh, than let's say a community relations director because they have so many leads to follow up on and all leads are not created equal, um, but we're still serving a purpose there. Same thing if they yeah. came back to the website and I agree with you, I think that there is a natural um, buying into your brand as people continue to go back and shop and we want to track that as well. I can tell you as long as you have the, the metrics available out there for us to track, we customize our software uh, to an API that allows us to integrate and, and pull the same data that you find extremely valuable. Uh, in your role and in Heidi, in your new role, uh, I think it's vital. Uh, you know, you, you want to be able to see what marketing channels are performing and you want to know what retargeting campaigns, what remarketing, what geotargeting. Uh, those are all investments that need to be showing what call to action brought them to you. Uh, so we're very respectful of that process, and uh, I'll, I'll end by saying we're students. Uh, you know, every every brand we serve, uh, we serve a little bit differently, and uh, it's just our ability to be students and understand uh, how you're employing our services to be a value to you, uh, so where we never let you down. And uh, Dave is pretty well oiled in the process of how to accomplish that. It's just your matter of when it's the right fit for your brand, and if we can complement that, and if it's uh, and when the timing is right as well. Um, you know, it, it's not a very pushy sales process because literally 90% of our business comes by by a referral, and uh, and I think that's because you guys are so chummy. It doesn't matter if you have a community in the same block you know, as one another, you just want good things for each other and you see a lot of hugs on the meeting room floors and so forth. It's, it's just an honor to serve this industry. And, uh, and usually it's, if it's, if it's the right fit, it's only a matter of time and, and the, and the person that is uh, forward thinking enough to give us that opportunity. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Jonathan. You paint a pretty picture, but, um, for the, uh, I mean, I know we're running, uh, just to keep the interest of time in, I know I might skip over a couple of these slides. Uh, this quick one pretty much um, just really kind of shows what's possible with uh, if we raise um, conversion rates. And these are kind of just some kind of, um, you know, we have a lot of um, what really kind of makes it special is our training process, you know, the time that we put in, um, you know, we're fully committed to our craft and, you know, that comes with true attention to making sure that we're hitting all the points with understanding the people we serve and the methods that we use. Um, you know, we build these databases that we use, that our chat hosts use directly when when uh, discussing with the visitors on your website. And, you know, that's just part of the onboarding process. Um, we have all these other really cool features like the dashboard where I was mentioning that you can see um, all the chats that have been had. You can track how many leads have been sent your way. Um, you know, I pretty much I I come with the whole package too, 
and I'm there every step of the way to make sure that we're hitting all those points. Um, and of course, A to B testing to make sure whichever process works best. Um, but um, just for a few questions, if I may, um, do you get any online inquiries, and do you see any of those like converting to a tour at all, or um, how popular is that section on your website? Yes, we do get, um, just uh, from a Clearwater standpoint, um, we've got two different platforms that we're working, um, one with the Clearwater um, uh, communities, which is only River Park at the moment, um, and then mm -hmm. the Wolf Properties. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, we are... Um, we are um, having, you know, monthly reviews of um, the performance um, for each of the digital advertising campaigns that we're doing. So, <clears throat> as well as, as from an SEO standpoint, so we are tracking, you mm -hmm. know, what leads are coming through the uh, the website, as well as, um, you know, what leads are are converting. It's a little bit more difficult for us to see. <clears throat> the leads are dropping into our CRM. So we are able to pull um, a report to show um, conversions there, um, but sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you know, the numbers are can be a little off from what we're seeing uh, from the uh, the performance um, dashboards um, versus our our CRM. Well, I mean, it definitely sounds like tracking you know is definitely super important to you, and I mean that's really at the core of our um, you know our online kind of. I mean, I don't write the technology myself, but from what I do for all my other current clients that I have, um, you know, I keep them up to date on everything with um, different chats, and they keep me, they, they bounce back saying like, hey, we just had two moves in, two move-ins directly related to this this month, and, um, you know, it's really exciting to see it all come together and that, that they're able to track it in that sense. So um, please know that we're definitely paying close attention to that. Um, it can definitely meet. Um, that re requirement. Um, so next, I would love for you to, you know, try us out. Um, you know, you have to, you know, the Jonathan always says the proof is in the pudding. So, uh, you know, you definitely have to uh, try it out yourself and see what you think. Um, you know, you're going to see, um, you know, that empathy that we're talking about. Um, you're going to see that we're able to provide information, proper service, you know, contact information is going to be um, um, asked for when it's appropriate and it's going to be a comfortable setting and an environment where you can really feel comfortable um, to hopefully take the next step which hopefully would be to be a tour um, so I definitely ask you to play along I can send you these uh, websites over by email so you can definitely try that and see it for yourself um, but you know more than uh, anything you know I really just appreciate your time um, you know, we're at about just a little bit over 30 minutes, and, you know, there's some of the clients that we serve. Um, you know, you're really valuable. So we value your time so much. But in closing, you know, I just hope that I was able to put a smile on your face at some point. You know, I hope you're able to imagine maybe some of the possibilities that we could do as partners. Um, you know, I see where you're headed from your website standpoint. I see a ton of opportunity there. Um, and we, would of course, would be so proud to serve you, but... I know we haven't really discussed numbers at all or anything, um, but, you know, would you believe that this would be something that's good for your um, website performance and your company overall? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't get me wrong. I, I love the idea of um, that instant gratification of going on to a website and being able to have somebody immediately respond to me. I think... Um, like you said, David, I think it's a matter of us going on and kind of testing it for ourselves. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'd like to know a little bit more in terms of, um, you know, the the, <clears throat> the back end stuff and, and how that would all work. But, I mean, I think that's, you know, those are all very detailed things that, that we can talk about if we decide to move forward. But, you know, I think that if we were to move forward, um, you know, I'll circle back with Christine and have a conversation with her. I think if we were to move forward, um, you know, right now we would probably want to test out, um, you know, our, our Clearwater community, um, and, uh, uh, Clearwater at River Park, um, getting um, – live chat onto the Wolf um, property um, sites will be um, another conversation um, that we would have with um, with our 
our our owners. Um, but if we were to start and and just you know, test out how this would work for us. It would probably sure. be with our, our one current Clearwater community. So, um, well, you that's know, fine. I, yeah. I mean, in, in order to get there, sorry to cut you off there, uh, but I just want to say, just to give you the more information so that you can make a more educated decision before you go to your owners, you know, I would love to send a proposal your way too, so you have more information in that sense. Uh, but in order for me to do so, um, if you would be willing, I would love to take a look at your Google Analytics. You know, what we do whenever we, before we serve someone, we really look and see what kind of trends we're seeing. I look for time on site. I look for visitor count. Um, I look for any specific, um, any nuances that I just need to be aware of um, in that visitor sense and what kind of volume we would be talking about to properly serve you. Um, so what I would love, um, just to have temporary access to gain those analytics on Google, would you be open to that, to me, just so I can provide you a proper report? Um, for Clearwater at River Park, um, I think we can make that happen. I think we'll have yeah. to figure out how to get you access to that. Um, but yeah, I would, I think that would make sense for you to have sure. the data to be able to, you know, tell us what, um, what you're proposing. Sure. Um, Heidi, can you follow up with? Yeah, I'll talk to Kyle. I know he just gave us access, so it's just... And you'll um, be able to get, okay. So we should be able to get that for you. Um, we sure. can follow up with you, David. Yeah, I can. Um, what I'll do, I'll send uh, this information over email and also uh, send you those links for you to try out too. Um, Heidi, what's your email address? Yeah, um, it's just Heidi. Dot Drinkward, and that's D R I N K W A R D at clearwaterliving.com. Perfect. Perfect. All right, well, I can definitely send that over. Um, and also the information, just the request for analytic review. And then, yeah, we could just go from there. I would love to, um, you know, set up another time to discuss. I know you're so busy, and we're go we've gone over a little bit here. Um, but, um, <coughs> Maybe is there a time next week we can reconvene? Um, is that enough time for you to discuss with Christine? Um, next week is getting pretty filled up. Let me... Sure. Um, well, let's think of a time. I mean, I'm pretty flexible on my end. Um, I can... Uh, I mean, you just... I mean, essentially, we would be discussing... Um, your experiences that you had um, on chatting, and then also we can discuss that proposal that I can definitely get in your hands, you know, at least 24 hours after I gain access to uh, your analytic review. And then, um, so pretty much a time where you can set maybe only 20 minutes. I mean, that call doesn't need to be very long, but I would love to hear your feedback and answer any questions about the proposal and kind of explain things where things would move after that, so. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm thinking it might have to either be the um, end of the last week of February or even into sure. um, early March at this point um, for a follow-up call. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to send you that email in the meantime. Do you have any other questions for me or anything like that? Um, no, I don't think so. Not at this time. Heidi, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I think I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Well, feel free to reach out to me at any time um, via email or phone call. Jonathan, do you have anything else to say or anything? No, Dave. Thanks for inviting me. This was fun. Nice to meet you, ladies. All right. You as well. Thank you, guys. Thank of you. course. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> hey, no, thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll be in touch. Okay. okay thanks, David. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.